Hi everyone, this is Anjul Patak and welcome to my channel. Today in this video, we will go through few more practice questions on Tableau Desktop Specialist Exam. So let's start the video. So first question is, which of the following is a valid way to create sets in Tableau? Now if you see uh, the four options over here, uh, to talk about the data pane and to talk about Tableau main menu and uh, very closely if you observe in the first two in the data pane one talks about the dimension and one talks about the measure now I'll show you if you go into the data pane and this is like these are the dimensions and these are measures so if you click on any dimension like ship mode okay so you will see that you get the option to right click create and set but if you click on any measure and if you click on create you will not get the option to create a set because you cannot create sets on measures okay and uh, the other options which are there in the tab tableau main menu so in main menu even if you choose worksheet or dashboard you won't get any option to create set okay neither in the worksheet nor in the dashboard so very clearly the answer would be in the data pane right click a dimension and select create set okay so that's the answer the second question is what does the following icon do in tableau okay so this icon if you have practiced enough in tableau you would very clearly be able to tell that it is basically create a dashboard right so if you go here in tableau you see that here this one is basically a new worksheet and this one which has four quadrants it talks about a new dashboard so here in this the option d create a dashboard this one would be the answer right and this icon can always uh, be a different in the exam like it could be this one for a new worksheet and this one for a new story okay so just remember that then third is like true or false it is possible to blend axis for multiple measures into a single axis so just clearly uh, observe that it's talking about multiple measures right so if you go here and let's say uh, you have something called as maybe segment over here and you have quantity okay quantity bar over here okay now if you want to blend the axis let's say i put in profit here now the moment i do this the axis will be blended right and what it does is it replaces the uh, uh, profit or quantity whatever measure was there with the measure values so for all the measures which are there in the visualization the axis will be blended now if i add over here sales in this again sales will also be added and the axis will be blended for sales over here so it's like one axis for all the measures so that's why it's called as blended axis so yes definitely it is possible to blend axis for multiple measures into a single axis so answer is true and if you want to study more on this you can definitely refer to this uh, tableau help over here uh, now this page talks about like add access for multiple measures in views okay then add individual access for measures so what i would suggest is basically go through all these points over here okay so and just thoroughly read all these uh, points and uh, literature which has been provided by tableau this will be very useful for the exam and similarly for previous questions like you know talking about the sets like dynamic uh, set fix set okay use sets in the visualization in and out members so just go through all these uh, uh, topics i would say okay it basically uh, enables you to perform better in the exam
okay uh, you should not be just limited to the questions which i have put up but yeah definitely go through all this literature which i have been providing in the links in the description of each or uh, each uh, video which i make okay so here also if you see like uh, it, it talks about all the visual cues and icons so like which visual cue means what okay so if if you are not sure just go through all this uh, literature and be confident on these things so that whenever it comes in the exam you are not clueless right okay so just go through those and uh, this one was the latest one okay so now go back to here the fourth question is how can you manually assign geographic roles to a dimension from the data pane okay now if you see let's say first one like right click edit default properties assign geographic roles let me go here it talks about let's say right click edit default properties and assign uh, no so see uh, when you edit default properties it's mm, there's no option called as assign geographic roles so this one cannot be edit the data source manually for a quick re resolution uh, so editing the data source will not help okay because editing the data source will only help you to change the data source uh, okay revise the data source uh, that's uh, the only thing which you can do with the edit data source right it will help you to change the data source so that cannot be an answer okay so going back here then right click geographic role and then assign the appropriate geographic role so let us come again here and uh, do the right click geographic role and then assign the appropriate geographic role yeah so this is the valid answer as you can see that answer is c okay and then last option like edit the config file in my documents my tableau repository for a quick fix uh, definitely this cannot be the answer okay so answer is c okay as i have shown you now fifth question is if you decide you want to see all the marks in the view at the most detailed level of granularity you can dash the view okay so let me show you a quick uh, visual for this okay let's say we have a scatter plot of profit and uh, sales okay now the moment you do this what tableau does is basically gives you just one point why because we don't have any dimension in the view so it's basically aggregating all the profit present in the data set it's aggregating all the sales present in the data set and then plotting a single point over here now this is called the aggregated data okay aggregated at the uh, level of visualization and here there is no dimension involved so that's why it's at the entire data source level now what it says is if you decide to see all the marks okay all the marks in the view now here one mark right but we want to see all the marks all the marks in the view at the most detailed level of granularity that is at the row level right so what we can do is we can go here in the analysis and if you'll see by default the check mark is against the aggregate measures so basically once you remove this check mark okay remove it and you will see that you can see all the marks okay here if you see 9994 marks so that means that you have these many rows in the data source so what we have done is though we have just unchecked this aggregate measures but actually we have disaggregated the data the opposite of aggregate is disaggregate right so we have disaggregated the data to view all the uh, data that is the most detailed level of granularity so definitely you can disaggregate the view will be the answer because see if you want to see the most detailed level of granularity sorting won't help splitting won't help and aggregate if you do aggregate then definitely you are reducing the granularity right you are not increasing it so the level of granularity and aggregation works opposite like if you are aggregating something you are reducing the granularity and if you are disaggregating something you are increasing the level of granularity okay 
so the answer is disaggregate now the sixth question is which of the following is true about incremental refresh when creating extracts in tableau now first is it replaces all of the contents in the extract uh, now definitely it won't happen for the incremental refresh okay so it cannot replace all of the content definitely it's false it only add rows that are new since the previous refresh right so this seems to be the answer then they can only be used with large data sets no it's not true there's no difference both are the same when using extracts they are different when using live connection this is entirely false i'll just walk you through the uh, tableau documentation also once you search extract your data okay very clearly here they have mentioned when refreshing the data you have the option to either do a full refresh which replaces all the contents in the extract okay so if you do a full refresh then only it will replace all the contents in the extract or you can do an incremental refresh which only adds rows that are new since the previous refresh so that's the answer like answer b okay now the seventh question is you have just created a histogram and now want to be able to change the size of bins dynamically using which of the following will easily satisfy your requirement okay so that means you want size of the bins to be dynamic in nature right now calculations uh, won't make it dynamic okay because calculation is just like a formula right it won't make dynamic so think like what has to be provided to you know make it uh, as dynamic something should come from the user right and that should be in the form of parameters right because anyways groups are constants calculations cannot be dynamic unless you have a parameter involved there right and then sets also sets will all only show you in and out of uh, the set members in members out that's the only role of sets and uh, parameter is something which you know you they are designed to take user input and make or facilitate dynamic nature in your tableau dashboards so the, yes the answer is definitely parameters okay and uh, you can definitely go and try it out if you have not done like if let's say if you click on sales and you just create a histogram over here so what it does is it creates a sales bin now this is static in nature right it, because now if you have to let's say play with the bin so then you will have to again go back here and you will see that size of the bin is constant 507 but if you want to make it dynamic you have this option called as create a new parameter right and then it will give you option let's say you say dynamic maybe dynamic bin okay you can do that right and current value i am not touching that okay you can give minimum maximum step size you can play with these things okay and just click okay and just click okay so you have a parameter over here you can just show this parameter on screen and now if you see i can play with the parameter right so this way now the histogram is dynamic in nature because the user has the control to uh, change the bins so that's what is being asked over here so answer is parameters now eighth is when using the manage metadata option we can create custom names for columns where dash is the original name of the column whereas dash is the custom name we created in tableau okay let us go to tableau and uh, if you go here in the data source here this is the metadata okay and here you see this field name is there physical table name is there and then the remote field name is here okay so very clearly what does remote means okay so from where the data is coming basically okay if you go here so if i want to let's say change any uh, name okay in the tableau let's say i want to change the order id so just click on this and let's say i call this as only maybe order order number maybe okay so now what has happened is this order number field is for tableau 
within tableau it doesn't change the field name in the remote field name right the remote data source it still stays as order id in the remote uh, connection or remote data source uh, if we go here you will see that order id has changed to order number for tableau okay so what is being asked here is uh, we create custom names for columns where is the original name of the column so original name of the column will always stay as remote field name so option is remote field name this one and whereas dash is the custom name we create in tableau so custom name which we create is the field name over here this column so that is the answer this one right so d is the answer the ninth which of the following url prefixes are permitted when creating a url action in tableau so uh, for this i'll just take you through the uh, tableau help okay you will can search url actions over here and once you go down you will see that in the url actions what is allowed the url should start with one of the following prefixes whether it is http https ftp mail to news go for tsc tsl sms tl and file okay so of these uh, we have in the options think uh, we have http ftp and https there is no mention of smtp in the tableau help uh, now these options can definitely change right in the exam depending on this right so you should be aware of all these so that's why i'm telling you whatever links i have been providing in the description of the videos just go through all the links okay so that you are confident on the entire topic not just one question right so going back here and uh, okay so the answer is uh, okay so http ftp and https right so smtp is not the answer now tenth question is you can create dash for members in a dimension so that their label appear differently in the view okay so again i'll go here and uh, let's say i have category right category is a dimension right so it talks about a dimension now if i go here in category you will see an option called as aliases now if i click here aliases what it does is it shows me currently what's the value what's the alias name over here so currently it's same right but i can always change right so i want to make it as tech so now the alias has changed this is the alias name and this is the actual name now whatever is the alias name that will be shown here okay let's say i show you category name over here so see now this alias name is coming over here you can change it from here also so edit alias and then I, let's say i want to change it back okay so i can do it again right so in short like you can create aliases for members in a dimension so that their labels appear differently in the view that will be the answer now 11th is dragging a dash to color creates distinct colors for each item whereas dragging a dash to color creates a gradient now this is a very very basic concept in tableau okay and uh, let me show you let's say i have uh, maybe okay let me show category and let's say i have sales over here okay and uh, let's say i drop sub category okay now sub category is a dimension if i drop a dimension into color you will see that it has drawn a palette right color palette that's what is distinct colors basically right these are all distinct colors so dragging a dimension basically we just saw that we dropped a dimension to color palette uh, and it creates a distinct colors for each item right so here we have uh, yeah this one discrete value right dimension or a discrete value okay <laughs> and 
so the corresponding answer here it's continuous value to color creates a gradient so that also i'll show you so let's say within this if i drop let's say profit okay i want to drop profit over here now you will see that this is a gradient okay starting from the lower range till the higher range you can definitely go and edit these uh, gradients you can change the feel and look okay you can make it a stepped color also okay so as per the requirement but it's a gradient okay it's not like a distinct color it's following a gradient and you can always choose the gradient uh, you want a two color tone gradient or three color tone or just a single you know gradient like this okay that can be done so that is for a continuous yeah this green pill you can see it's a continuous field so here the answer would be b discrete value and the continuous value okay and if you want you can uh, read on this also okay this one was on the create aliases then there's color palette and effects okay do read this topic as well what exactly does each of these topics uh, have to tell you okay like mark hellos mark borders just try to see and uh, try to practice also these things okay so coming back here now last question is which of the following are valid ways to add totals to a view now if you have to add totals to a view i'll just show you okay coming here let's say i have category sub category and i have sales sales numbers over here this is a table right now i want to show uh, totals over here one option is to go to analysis and you have the option of totals show grand totals show column totals show row totals to left add all sub totals okay so this is one option from the analysis menu second is from the analytics pane you have this option called as totals when you just double click it you get all the totals being added or if you don't want to double click you can just drag it and you will see that what you want to do it gives you the options if you want only column grand totals it will add grand totals okay so likewise you have these two options there's nothing on the data pane which helps you to get the totals over here right so coming back here so using the marks shelf no no mark shelf you don't get the option to show the totals okay using the data pane no i just showed it to you from the analysis tab in the menu bar on top yes i just showed you and using the analytics pane that's is also true so yeah these two question uh, answers are right okay so that's it guys i hope you like the video do subscribe to my channel and do like this video thank you